Check, one, two. Welcome as we gather for our Ash Wednesday service. We are going to be starting up the Lenten services again, and there will be uh, we'll be doing it a little bit differently differently this year. We will be uh, including in um, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Bonnie Holiday and uh, Reverend Doctor uh, Cheryl Christensen um, from the United Church and Anglican Church, uh, so that we will be rotating through uh, who's giving the messages. Uh, through uh, the uh, different weeks. So this will be a blessing and a, something good that we can uh, do together in our uh, times of separation. Uh, so it's been very interesting and it won't all be uh, from this location here. We'll be doing some recording uh, and then posting it um, at the different uh, churches' Facebook pages too. So that will be a great uh, gift uh, to be able to do this this year. So as we uh, begin, I invite us to uh, prepare our hearts for this time of worship, prepare ourselves for the, the gift of the journey in Lent. Uh, this year, um, we will be looking at preparing, preparing for God's blessing, preparing for God's goodness, uh, preparing during this time of change. So I invite us to... Uh, to enter into a time of worship as God prepares us for what he has for us. So let us take a moment in silent prayer. Lord, as we make room in our hearts for you, as we make room in our minds for you, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your grace and your love. Transform us to be more like you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The first scripture reading. By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Genesis 3.19. On this Ash Wednesday, we remember the gift of grace, the gift of God's love, the reality of where we are and where we have been that God formed us from the ground. He formed us in our mother's womb. He has given us life. He has breathed life into us. And as we journey through this time of remembrance, we remember the ashes. And many times we, if you're, depending on which tradition you're from, you'll take the uh, palm leaves from the previous Palm Sunday and burn them. And then you'll have the ashes and people will make signs of cross on their forehead, reminding us of whose we are. The sign of God's love, of God's redemption, of God's hope. But it is also a sign that reminds us that the gift of grace that God has given us is not a free gift. It is free to us. 
but it is, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, it is a costly gift of grace. For it costs Christ everything. As he willingly laid down his life for us, that our sins could be washed away, and that we could be renewed, that we could be redeemed, that the relationship between ourselves and God could be restored. If you remember the tune, you may sing along or you may uh, join in just reading it. It is called, O Lord, Hear My Prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I come, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. Let us pray. Lord, we are yours. You have formed humanity out of the ground. And we remember that the life that you have given us to live is a life that you have breathed into us. Lord, by the gift of your spirit, we are given strength and renewal. By the gift of your love and your grace, we are given hope. By the gift of Jesus Christ, we are given new life. Lord, in this time of of suffering, in this time of grieving, in this time of uncertainty. Lord, we remember the cost. Lord, as we make space for you, as we give up that which we hold on too tightly to, as we give up stuff, as we give up ways of thinking, ways of acting, to make space for your transformative spirit in us, to make space for your love, which brings healing and renewal. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for the broken world around us. Hear our prayer for the suffering, for the hurting, for the lost. Hear our prayer for those who seem strong, yet are crumbling under weakness. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer for the leaders who are constantly making decisions and hearing the squabbling of the people. Lord, we pray for guidance and wisdom for all of us, for the decisions that need to be made, in these uncertain times, for decisions for safety and for health, for livelihood and support. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, guide us in your, in your truth and in your understanding. Lord, help us to see you in the world around us, in our daily lives. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our next song is entitled, Open Our Eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. And say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, we want to see Jesus. Our next scripture reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. And Isaiah writes, Shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people is Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day 
and seem delighted to learn all about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves and you don't even notice it. I will tell you why. I responded, it's because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds, bending in the wind. You dress and burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please the Lord? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind them. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer, Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply, Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. When we think about Lent, uh, many people remember, some still practice. Uh, Some hold it very tightly to who they are as a Christian. But there is the element of fasting. And many times when we think of fasting, we think of giving up a certain food or, or a whole meal or we only fast a different, or we only eat at certain times of the day. Some of us think about fasting as giving up something that we, uh, we really don't want. Like there's a whole bunch of people that are probably giving up uh, and fasting from Brussels sprouts. Really, they're not starting to. They already have been. Now, personally, I like Brussels sprouts, but you get the picture. There are a number of people that don't understand the beauty and the wonders of these, this great vegetable. Some people, when they think of fasting, they think of the easiest thing to fast from because they've already been fasting from it. And yet others, when we think of fasting, it is giving up something that is near and dear to our hearts. I remember one church that uh, did a, what they call a Daniel fast, and they're only eating things that uh, Daniel and his, um, and his fellow Israelites were eating when they were uh, exiled to Babylon. In, in the court of, ba- uh, of, of the king of Babylon. One story out of that was that there was a person working at a bank and he was fasting from coffee. And the manager comes up to him and says, you either need to have a coffee or you need to go home because you can't treat the customers like that. When we take on fasting, it is to make room for God's grace, for God's love, for God's spirit in us. That people might see more of Christ, not more of ourselves. It is a reminder that when we reach for that which we are giving up and we stop ourselves, we remember why we are giving it up. And yet, what God is calling us to isn't necessarily about fasting from food in this, in this particular scripture from Isaiah.
God is asking us not just to fast for the sake of fasting, to make ourselves look pious and to give ourselves the appearance of being pious and religious, of doing what God has called us to do. It is going down deep into who we are and how we live our lives. It is more about our attitude change towards God, towards ourselves, and towards those around us. How do we receive the blessings that God has given us? Whether it is food, whether it is clothing, whether it is shelter. How do we share it with others? For those that are, that are um, employers, how do we treat our employees? For those who are teachers, how do we treat our, our students? For those who are parents, how do we treat our children? It's not saying to, to take away all of the work that, we, that is required, but are we treating them with respect and as people? Are we treating them in a way that is going to help them to grow and to encourage and to build up instead of to break down and to be feeling the, the, the suffering of oppression? How are we encouraging people, including ourselves, to be people of God? And what does that look like? Not just on the outside, but on the inside too. That in our words and our actions should be continually pointing to God in all that we do and all that we say. In the Scripture verse, it can be summed up in, and it's been summed up in the Scriptures in the Old and the New Testament very succinctly. Jesus put it this way, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body, and with all your soul. Now, Isaiah is saying uh, and recording what God had said through him, that people, in their act of fasting, that it is more about them looking good than having that relationship with God. But God is calling us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our body, and with all of our soul. All that we have, all that he has given to us, we are to give to Him. And when we do that, it affects how we live our lives each and every day. How we treat others, how we see others, how we share with others. Do we see others as a means to our end? Or do we see others as fellow image bearers of God? As dearly loved brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ? Are we sharing the blessings that God has given to us? Are we allowing Christ to be seen in what we do and what we say, and it looks like Christ, not just a pale representation of how we think that Christ is represented in our religiosity, but is actually having that connectedness with God's community of faith and helping to nurture faith within that community that God has placed us in. We all have a, a role to play. We all have a part to serve. We are all important in this. That Christ might be seen in and through us in how we act but you see, we sometimes forget that the Jesus that people see, they're first introduced to Jesus in us. Is the Jesus that people see in us a Jesus that is selfish, that quarrels? We know more about who, what Jesus dislikes than what Jesus loves. How are we representing Jesus in this world? In our journey of Lent, in our journey of faith, we have to remember that our faith is not just a choice that happens in private, but it is a choice of living that happens throughout all of our life, 
throughout our private life, throughout our public life, throughout our life of play and leisure? Are we representing Christ in all that we do? How are we doing that? It's hard at times. But when we start to do that, God is there with us. Because as we start to come closer to God, God is coming closer to us. This is the part of Lent that we too often forget, that it is us coming closer and making room and focusing on our relationship with God, with Christ, that doesn't just guide our relationship, but changes our relationship, that helps it to grow and increase and flourish. So as we journey through Lent, may we focus on coming closer to Christ. Which means when we're fasting, maybe it's fasting from the quarrels, from the arguments, fasting from sarcasm, fasting from our pride. Fasting from our self-reliance. And start joining together more and more with Christ. With who he has called us to be. With who he has created us to be. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time of worship, but also for the gift of grace that you have given us in Jesus. Lord, help us to be Jesus. Help us to be like Jesus. To share in Jesus' Jesus love, to share in Jesus' life, that others might see Christ in us. Jesus, you are our Lord and our Savior. But help us to also recognize that when we go out as people of faith, as followers of Jesus, as followers of you, others will see us and hopefully they will see you in us. Let us not forget this truth this reality, that in our lives, in our speaking, in our acting, people are looking for you. May we be ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of your love, of your grace, of your hope, ambassadors of your blessing, of sharing what you have given us, humbly and boldly. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite us to join together as we uh, sing, Will You Come and Follow Me?
So my friends, as we go from this time of worship, may our journey through Lent continue on. May you be guided by the Spirit of Christ living in you. May we recognize what God requires of us. May we recognize who we are before Christ. May we go as followers of Christ, not as leaders of Christ, but as followers. May we go in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.